The US has the strongest economy in the world, and despite what some would have you believe, it leads by a pretty significant margin. Yet when it comes to the race for the tallest skyscrapers, America seems to have ceded its lead. Why have major US cities who set the stage for the modern skyscraper seemingly just let the title shift to Asia? And how has China, specifically, been able to build skyscrapers at a pace that the world has never seen before? To help me explain, today I took a trip to one of America's most prominent cities. America is often hailed as the birthplace of the skyscraper. In the last century, the majority of the world's tallest buildings were located within the US. Cities like New York and Chicago became synonymous with towering architectural feats, and the title of the world's tallest building was consistently held by American structures. From the early 20th century through the late 90s, iconic skyscrapers such as the Empire State Building and the Sears Tower epitomized America's ambition. And today I'm here in Philadelphia, home to the tallest building in the US outside of Chicago and New York City. The Windy City and the Big Apple were the most notable skyscraper cities during the 20th century. These cities didn't just house tall buildings, they became symbols of American growth and progress. The race for height reached new bounds, with each city trying to outdo the other. The crown of the world's tallest building remained firmly in America's grasp until 1997, when the Petronas Towers in Malaysia overtook the Sears Tower with their decorative spires. And with that, the late 20th and early 21st century marked a significant shift in the landscape of skyscraper construction. Asian countries began to emerge as the new leaders in building tall structures. Cities like Dubai, Shanghai, and various southeastern Asia metropolises started to dominate the skyline. And especially in recent years, the majority of newly built skyscrapers have been located in these regions. As of today, the total number of skyscrapers above 500 feet in China is over three and a half times that of the US. Beyond this, multiple skyscrapers over 500 meters in height have successfully been built in China. In contrast, America's tallest building by roof height is the 472 meter tall Central Park Tower, which is only slightly taller than the Sears Tower, which was built in the 70s. As a side note, the official tallest building in the US, the One World Trade Center, is actually short shorter than the Central Park Tower and Sears Tower when excluding its antenna. But why exactly has America seemingly given up on the pursuit of building higher? Theoretically, skyscrapers can reach heights of at least 2 kilometers or around 6,600 feet. But this isn't 100% true. 2 kilometers represents a generally accepted theoretical height based on economic factors. It doesn't actually mean that a physical skyscraper couldn't be built taller than that. Some sources have said that a skyscraper could actually be built taller than Mount Everest, but it would need a base that's so large it would hardly resemble a classic skyscraper. And in the late 90s, a megatall 4,000 meter skyscraper was theorized in Japan called the Sky Penetrator. But this still doesn't help answer the question as to why the US isn't building as many skyscrapers. In many American cities, strict engineering standards make constructing taller buildings more challenging and expensive. This is evident in Los Angeles, which lies near the San Andreas fault line. Building structures over a thousand feet is especially difficult due to the city's rigorous engineering requirements. For example, the Wilshire Grand Center was initially proposed with a roof height of 350 meters, but had to be scaled down to 285 meters. Similarly, the Angels Landing Project could not get approval for its proposed height of 310 meters and had to reduce it to just 260 meters. As a result, the US Bank Tower still remains the tallest building by roof height in Los Angeles. The United States also imposes a rare nationwide height restriction on all man-made structures. The FAA doesn't permit skyscrapers to exceed 2,000 feet to ensure airline safety. In cities where airports are close to the city center, such as Seattle and Miami, the restrictions are even uncompromising, limiting skyscraper heights to around 1,000 feet. Despite these restrictions, the FAA is not solely responsible for the absence of the world's tallest buildings in America. A height limit of 2,000 feet still should provide plenty of breathing room. In some places in America, like New York City, owning land does not automatically grant the right to build as high as desired due to zoning laws. Each lot has a maximum density restriction that affects a building's allowable height. Thinner buildings with lower density can be built taller, which is why many pencil-like skyscrapers such as 111 West 57th Street have emerged. Air rights, which are transferable, further complicate matters. Developers wishing to exceed the height limit can purchase unused air rights from adjacent properties. However, this process can be financially prohibitive, or more commonly, adjacent property owners may refuse to sell their air rights to avoid having their buildings overshadowed or to prevent blockage of sunlight. And when available air rights are insufficient, developers are forced to settle for shorter than expected skyscrapers. In China, the sites chosen for constructing numerous tall buildings are primarily flat terrains. This can be seen in the skyscrapers in the Pudong district of Shanghai and other 
districts in Chanjin, where extensive flat land facilitates these projects. In contrast, places like New York City, Chicago, and here in Philadelphia face significant challenges due to the dense occupation of land by existing buildings. Identifying flat parcels of land, like large open parking lots, is exceedingly difficult in overdeveloped dense areas. Locations like the Hudson Yards are rare exceptions, representing a minority of available flat land. And even building a foundation for a large part of that project with Manhattan West took a ton of work. Additionally, taller buildings need larger foundations, requiring the acquisition of multiple adjacent properties. For instance, Sears purchased an entire block of buildings to make space for the Sears Tower. While technically feasible, these elevated costs and logistical challenges significantly deter developers. In some cities like San Francisco, approval for taller skyscrapers can be hindered by concerns over the shadows they cast on nearby residential buildings. This Salesforce Tower, for example, was initially planned to be 370 meters tall, but was scaled down to 326 meters due to these shadow issues. Similarly, in New York City, the shadows cast on Central Park by newly built super tall towers on 57th Street have sparked protests, prompting the Municipal Arts Society to seek ways to curtail the city's super-tall boom. Historical proposals for megatall skyscrapers in American cities have also faced significant opposition. In 1985, Donald Trump proposed a television city tower, a 1,670-foot skyscraper to be built at the Riverside on West 66th Street in New York City. Despite having NBC already signed on as the anchor tenant, local community groups opposed the project, ultimately leading to its cancellation. In stark contrast, China operates under a different paradigm. Authorities can mandate the relocation of nearby residents to make way for skyscraper construction, effectively eliminating obstacles like protests. This is one of the many examples of China's continued push to severely curtail rights to freedoms of expression and association. And like it or not, it's enabled China to build these mega structures considerably easier. The perception that America has no demand for more skyscrapers is actually quite misleading. Population growth drives the need for more housing and buildings to accommodate new residents. Which is why New York City continues to see super tall residential building development, just not at the rate of its foreign rival. In China and the Middle East, a major driving force behind the construction of the tallest buildings is the desire to enhance the prestige of a city. In America, however, many cities are already globally renowned and don't require the world's tallest or most unique building to bolster their reputation. Without a doubt, financial difficulties remain the most significant impediment to new U.S. skyscrapers. The Empire State Building, once the world's tallest building, was constructed during an era of inexpensive labor, primarily by immigrants. In contrast, today's construction workers in the U.S. are predominantly local Americans, leading to higher labor costs. For example, the Burj Khalifa in Dubai cost $1 billion to construct, whereas the Comcast Technology Center here in downtown Philadelphia, a building less than half its height, cost more to build. This can also be seen in China, where cheap labor enables more of these projects. The belief that very tall skyscrapers may harm business is actually not entirely false, as evidenced by Sears. Once the world's largest retail group, Sears gradually declined after the construction of the Sears Tower, eventually selling the building in the 1990s. With this in mind, a Hong Kong real estate tycoon deliberately built his group's headquarters shorter than the nearby Bank of China Tower to avoid potential business risks. Hopefully, the new JP Morgan Chase headquarters, which is set to be complete in 2025, won't share the same fate as Sears. U.S. skyscraper development, while not at the same pace as other countries, is here to stay. I've covered several of the most intriguing projects over the past few months, and I urge you to check them out if you have an interest. I want to thank you for watching the video, and ask that you please leave some feedback via the Google Forms link in the description. I really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.